In today's video, I'm gonna show you how to disassemble the Pin Slammer 4 and then simultaneously reassemble it and service it at the same time. Now, if you have the Pin Slammer 4 DX, which is the silver model, do not fear, this is the right video for you. All that you need to know is that the spool is gonna have an extra bearing. So where the Slammer 4 just has one bearing in the spool, the Slammer 4 DX will have two bearings in the spool. I highly recommend you go out and get a uh, stowaway tackle box for cleaning your reels. When I take a Apart the spool and all its components it goes right here when I take apart the rotor and all its associated components it goes right here and here and so on and so forth and what that does is that prevents me from mixing up rotor fasteners so like screws that belong to the rotor with screws that belong to the body assembly it's gonna save you a lot of heartache I always use this beer tin it is absolutely phenomenal but it works great because it has this wall here so as I'm disassembling the reel over this beer tray all the components fall in there and they stay in this contained area you're gonna need a micro screwdriver set normal screwdrivers a socket wrench with a number 15 socket that's for the uh, rotor nut and then I always use a real butter uh, cleaning kit I got the real butter oil and the uh, blue grease now grease is really important when you reassemble a complex reel like this this because it's kind of a temporary glue stubborn components that don't want to stay put I could just put a little grease on them and it acts like as a temporary glue and gives me enough time to get a, a screwdriver on top of it and send it home it also works great for uh, the main body seal I put grease on the channel and then it locks in that seal for reassembly so it's a nice little hack if you're not mechanically inclined go to your local tackle shop they almost always have one person on call that fixes and services reels enough uh, rambling on let's just get right into the video all right we're looking at our fully assembled slammer 4 first thing we're going to do is loosen up the drag knob and that will allow the spool to come free and then we're going to unscrew the handle assembly counterclockwise and then we're going to uh, screw the handle cap with a seal off and you can see the little seal there behind it now we're going to grab our drag knob and pull that off and you can see it has a seal quite a bit of grease and then what we're looking at here is the drag cover. Now make sure you get a picture of that. That way you don't screw it up when you go back to reassemble it. Or you just watch this video. All right, so we're gonna remove all the screws out of the drag cover. And then here we're gonna uh, pull out the line clip retainer that just popped out. And then we have our clicker there that comes out as well. All right, so here's the line clip retainer. I use a little micro flathead, it pulls right on out, then your little line clip pops out as well. That's a very small component, so make sure you don't lose that. All right, so the drag cover uh, pops out. Note the orientation as it comes out, and then we have the little drag cover seal. This reel is very well sealed. And then we have our first, uh, I guess we'll call it a uh, drag washer. So I'm just gonna pull these washers out and I'll show you on the back end how to put them in uh, correctly. A good technique is as the washers are coming out, you lay them out uh, in sequential order. And then when you go to put them in, you just work backwards. But it's almost always a metal composite metal. If you have metal on metal, you're probably doing something wrong when it comes to the drag washers. And then I go and I stow those uh, in its own compartment. Now I'm looking at the spool bearing retaining clip. Now, hilariously enough, boom, it just went flying right there. <laughs> it flew, it flung it like five feet, but I just miraculously saw it and uh, was able to get it. And then there's that spool bearing. Your uh, Slammer 4 DX will have two of those. All right, so if we flip the spool around, we can pop the retaining um, spring out of the top, and then we have a couple drag washers sitting on top of the spool. So this reel has drag on top of drag, which is amazing. So we got that awesome 30 pound drag system. All right, so there's your uh, spools pretty well disassembled. I put all the respective components in its own compartment. Now we're gonna take off the side plate of the body. So I guess we can call it the body side plate. And those are the body side plate uh, screws. We can call it the body cover. All right, so we're gonna put those components and the screws in their own little home. There's your body seal. Don't damage that or pinch it. And now we're looking at our main gear. 
beautiful brass. So we're gonna wind down the rotor so that the crosswind block is exposed and it allows us to unscrew the crosswind block screw. That's a nice tiny little screw that strips easily, so take care of that. And then boom, that frees up our main shaft, so that pulls right on out. Now here's an example where you probably just wanna stop there. I can perfectly clean that component without disassembling it any further, and that's what I recommend. All right, there's the uh, crosswind block and we'll call it the guide shaft. And then boom, your main gear, beautiful brass main gear comes out. If you're in the Slammer 4 DX, that'll be steel. All right, so now the crosswind gear screw comes out and then I just pop out that crosswind gear. All right, coming to you in post-production. Now hiding behind that crosswind gear on the crosswind shaft is a small plastic bushing. Make sure you don't lose that. We'll go stash those. All right, next we're gonna tackle the crosswind block retaining plate, or retainer plate. That comes out, and those are stowed together in their own compartment. All right, next we got the rotor nut locking plate. So that pops off with its respective screws. There's a seal underneath it that's pretty fragile. Not really fragile, but it's thin, so take care of that. Don't like gouge it or anything. And then we have our size 15 nut and we'll unscrew that. Now it might be smart to mark the uh, rotor nut and like maybe scratch your rotor so you got the, the torque setting right. And then there's another seal underneath that uh, rotor nut. So now we can put the uh, rotor aside. And looking underneath the rotor, we can see there it has another seal. And then we have a rectangular um, rotor brake on the right. And then there's that washer. You got a washer sitting underneath that rotor as well. So make sure you don't lose that. All right, now we're gonna take apart the rotor brake, the circular rotor brake. So unscrew those screws and that pops off. All right, now the pinion pack comes out. And then there's a pretty much empty body. And there's another seal. It's like a side body seal. All right, there's uh, another little tiny washer. Now some of these washers you'll notice in the schematics like don't appear anywhere. So like, I don't know if they're just taking liberty at the factory of throwing extra washers in certain places, but just be mindful. So there's the pinion bearing and its respective collar. There's the, um, the roller bearing. Basically it's the uh, anti-reverse uh, bearing. And this is from left to right, all the pinion pack components. And there's this little collar at the end, little plastic uh, collar. Don't make sure you don't lose that. Looking at the side body, um, you have a bearing and uh, three respective screws on this, the body cover and the main body. Uh, I tend to leave those alone because um, those those screws have been worked pretty hard. I don't want to strip them out. I can clean that bearing perfectly fine. All right, let's go ahead and tackle our rotor. So what we have there is the bail arm screw. We'll back out that bail arm screw. And then there's this bail arm screw washer, this little plastic washer. Do not lose that. It's super easy uh, to lose. Then we're gonna pull out our bail. And then what we got here is the, we'll call it the line roller collar. So that first thing off is a line roller collar. Then we got our line roller and we're staring at a tiny little bearing. And on the back side of that line roller, you can see there is a ceramic uh, bushing. All right, moving along, we're gonna twist our bail arm, essentially, I guess, 270 degrees and then it uh, comes out of the bail holder. So we're going to unscrew the bail arm, just like that. All right, our bail arm comes off. And then there's our pivot arm, a little pivot arm comes out. So that's the rotor cover. We took the rotor cover screw out and what fell out there was that uh, rectangular rotor brake. All right, coming at you from post-production yet again. When you take that rotor cover off, the rotor trip lever no longer has tension on it, so it'll back out and it'll allow that um, rectangular rotor brake to fall out, and that's that white piece with a little spring in it. All right, 
So there is our bale spring. That bale spring comes out. And then we have our rotor trip lever that just pulls on out. And then what we have here is an almost assembled, almost a disassembled rotor. So now we're gonna take the bale holder screw, back out the bale holder screw, and pull off the bale holder. And that is, if I'm not lying now, a almost completely disassembled uh, rotor. I left the two seals in there. You can take those off, grease them up, clean them, do what you need to do. All right, at this point, you've probably taken the reel down as far as you need to. So let's go ahead and reassemble the reel. What you have on the left there, that's your rectangular rotor brake. You got your pivot arm. That black thing is your uh, rotor cover. And then you got your two um, screws there. And then you got your bail rotor trip lever. All right, now we're gonna reassemble the rotor. So we're gonna take our rotor trip lever, insert that just like that, slide it all the way to the top. Then we're gonna take our bail spring, insert our pivot arm, just like that. And it's gonna slide into its respective housing or channel. And note that, note that that cam on top points uh, towards you and they just stack on top of each other like that. Those two uh, circular uh, points at the end. Now we're gonna put in our rectangular rotor brake. See that little uh, housing indent? The spring goes in just like that. I'm gonna push in my rotor trip lever. The spring goes towards the top of the rotor. And I just slide it in. And then you got that little half circle on the plastic, white plastic rotor brake. And then that uh, trip lever just slides back over and holds it in place. I recommend putting your thumb on it. Otherwise that trip lever is just gonna bounce out and then you're, you got a spring loaded piece of plastic that's gonna wanna jump out on you. So you can notice my left hand, my left thumb is holding that uh, rectangular rotor brake in place until I can get this rotor cover installed and that'll keep that that trip lever as I'm demonstrating there from backing out and allowing that rotor brake to shoot out. All right, so there it is, a smaller screw. Tighten that down, don't, don't reef on it and strip it. But tighten that uh, cover screw, apply some grease on the uh, bale cover or bale holder shaft and install it just like that. You can see there's like a little cam on the bale holder that goes in the, into the top channel uh, of the rotor there. And then here, the pivot arm and the trip lever need to be slightly gapped apart. And then your bale holder will squeeze uh, in between and snap it home. And then there's that bigger uh, screw for your um, bale arm. All right, we're looking at a still image of the line roller assembly. So from the bottom left, we have your line roller screw, your little plastic line roller washer, your line roller bearing, your actual line roller, your line roller collar, uh, we'll call it the line roller bushing. Then you have your bale arm, which we have already installed on the rotor, and then your bale wire. All right, we'll take our plastic bushing, we'll throw it on the line roller shaft, then we're gonna take our line roller, note the orientation, just like that. Notice it slope down away from the bale towards the bale arm, all right? Now we can put our line roller bearing in place. That'll tighten it, tighten that line roller up nice and neat. Um, you can throw some grease on that. It's pretty well lubed up in my case. And we're gonna throw that line roller colt that line roller collar on and note the orientation, upper left image. Okay, now we're gonna take our line roller screw, place it in the bale arm with this respective plastic washer. It looks like I get it started here with the screw. Then I'm gonna take my uh, bale and then tighten up that uh, bale arm screw or line roller screw, whatever you want to call it. I'm 
throw some grease on the opposite side of the bale. And then kind of note the orientation of that bale holder. You kind of twist it around until it locks in. I think you kind of have to go like 180 from what it should be oriented and then it'll like slide in and then rotate it back down and then it'll lock in place. So once you put that bale holder on and like twist it around, make sure it doesn't come back off when it's like in the right orientation. So I threw grease on that uh, bale holder shaft, a little bit of oil for the bale holder screw, that way nothing rusts up on me. And then just tighten it up. Uh, just tighten gently, don't get wild on this reel. Um, a lot of the screws and fasteners come with blue Loctite, so it's going to stay put. Throw some grease on that line roller, that way it never seizes up. And then test uh, functionality. It should lock up uh, in the upright and down position, no problem. All right, let's assemble our pinion pack. So you got your uh, pinion gear, your, uh, we'll call it the pinion gear washer or um, bottom washer. Basically whatever just holds everything up on the pinion gear. You got your small pinion bearing, your uh, bearing roller clutch collar, your roller clutch, your main bearing collar, your main bearing, uh, your washer, and then your little plastic sleeve or collar that goes on top of your pinion gear near the threads. All right, let's get started. All right, so we got our pinion gear. We're gonna slide our little keyed washer down past the threads and it's gonna sit on top of the pinion gear teeth. And then we put our little small bearing on. Then we're gonna throw on our clutch sleeve. Just like that, it's keyed as well. And then what we have here is our roller clutch, plastic pointed down towards the bearing. And then we got our uh, bearing collar for the big bearing. That goes in just like that. And then we got our tiny little metal washer that goes on top. And then our little plastic, we'll call it sleeve or bushing, whatever the heck, collar. And that goes uh, on top near the threads. And I just uh, throw a lot of grease and oil all over everywhere. And then um, I'll grease that uh, bottom of the painting gear and it's a uh, housing there. You know, when I buy these reels and I take them apart for the very first time from the factory to see like what's going on inside, they come with a lot of grease and oil. So like, I'm not scared to use a lot of grease and oil. All right, there's the bottom of a rotor brake. Uh, we got our seal on there. That goes on top. Then we throw in our rotor brake screws. And we tighten those up. So we're tightening up those uh, rotor brake screws just like that. And I like to throw grease. Anything that's rubber, I like to throw some grease on it because I have like really old pen reels and eventually that rubber will crack and uh, disintegrate. So I feel like oil just keeps it nice and sealed up and moisturized. All right, now we're going to attach the rotor to the body of the reel. Up top is the rotor nut locking plate. Then we have the rotor main shaft seal, and then we'll call it the uh, rotor washer, and then finally the rotor nut. All right, we're gonna flip the rotor over and we're gonna apply grease to that little rotor seal on the bottom. Make sure that stayed on the rotor and wasn't lost somewhere. And we have this little rotor washer that I use the grease to stick on to that seal. And then I lube up the rectangular rotor brake and insert the partially assembled body. The rotor and the pinion gear are keyed, so you gotta twist them until they seek alignment. I throw a little oil on the threads. That seal on top is nice and uh, lubed up, so we're just gonna throw the rotor nut on, tighten it by hand, and then we're just gonna gently tighten it with the size 15 socket. And I'll show you the orientation in which my rotor nut came. All right, so we're gonna throw that rotor nut seal on, clean it off a little bit. It's uh, nice and wet and good to go. So there we go, there's rotor nut and seal. And then I'm gonna show you here shortly how my rotor nut locking plate was oriented. So the holes were towards the right of the um, elongated holes on the locking plate. 
so that's what mine looked like. So note you, the orientation of your reel as you're taking it apart. If you don't, not a big deal. Just tighten it, tighten the rotor nut till you see, until you see fit, and then just throw the locking plate on. And if you, and if the holes are in any sort of alignment, go ahead and throw the screws in there. All right, now for the fun part, we can tackle the uh, main body. So first thing we're gonna do is put the bushing on the back side of the crosswind block shaft. Then we're gonna throw our crosswind block on, or actually, my bad, that's the crosswind gear. And then we're gonna take our crosswind gear uh, screw and tighten that home. Now that screw oftentimes comes from the factory looking a little uh, shredded. <laughs> Not terrible, but it's like on the brink of being stripped. So it might even be smart to not mess around with that gear, like clean it up, lube it up, and you're probably good for the entire life of the reel. Um, you're kind of tempting fate by constantly taking that crosswind gear screw on and off. All right, so now we have our crosswind gear, crosswind block uh, locking plate. It has a um, body pin on the bottom that just helps with alignment. And then you have that one plate screw that goes in on top. All right, next we got our main gear. Mine came with, what's that, one, two, three washers in that location. And if you look at the schematic, it's like one washer. So you see that a lot with pen schematics versus your actual reel. Like, I feel like they just willy-nilly, or maybe it's strategic, they throw like spacing washers um, at liberty at certain components. All right, so our main gear is all lubed up. We've put that aside. And now we're gonna assemble our crosswind block on top of the crosswind gear. Now on the back side of that crosswind block, there's a little channel and there's a cam on the crosswind gear. So that crosswind gear um, cam goes into the channel behind the crosswind block and then you have that guide shaft on the left. So just rewind the video if you need to, see what I did to put that in. And inside the body, I'm never scared to put a bunch of grease all over the uh, drivetrain. So now we have our main gear in. With the main gear and the crosswind block installed, we can uh, slide down the main shaft and then it's gonna push into the crosswind block just like that. As you can see is you can see there the main shaft, the bottom of the main shaft goes into the crosswind block. That's kind of what secures everything in place. And we're gonna tighten up that crosswind block screw. Make sure you don't strip it. So cool, we got main shaft, we're gonna spin our rotor, and everything should be working just like that, going up and down. Now we're gonna put our body seal back in. So like I said, mentioned earlier, we throw a bunch of grease in the channel, and what that does is that just locks everything in like a temporary glue, just raw, locks in that seal, holds it nice and in place, it won't pop out on you. You see there's like a little seal key and that's make sure you have the right orientation that locks in on the right. So just press it around until everything's nice and flush and smooth. And that's what that grease does for you. And once that seal's in place, we can throw on the side body cover and tighten in the fasteners. Don't over tighten those either, just nice and firm. Perfect. All right, now it's time to reassemble the spool. It's on the back. Bottom side of the spool, we can take our spool or our spool bearing and insert that, throw a little oil on it, and then we have our spool bearing retainer that goes in. Now, if this is the Slammer 4 DX, there are two bearings that you have to install there. But it's basically the same process. You throw in the two bearings and you throw that retaining clip on top. The Slammer 4 that we're looking at here is just the one bearing, and that's an up close of what it looks like. Now we're gonna throw in our drag washer. I believe that's metal down, carbon up. And then we got our metal keyed washer. And we have our double-sided uh, carbon washer. And then we have our metal, I don't know what that is. That's the uh, like drag plate. We'll just call it the drag washer plate. I 
there's some oil on the channel for the uh, drag system seal. And just slide that in place. We'll make sure it's nice and flush. Now we can throw in our drag cover. And note the orientation. Just like that. So the raised lip is gonna go in towards the drag washer. So the recess um, side faces towards you just like that. And now I'm gonna line the holes up until like every hole makes sense. And I'm gonna reference the picture that I took as I was disassembling the reel so I can assemble it correctly. So throw in the primary fasteners. Then we're gonna throw in our line clip. And make sure the holes in the line clip are like parallel to the spool. And that will allow you to um, slide in the line clip uh, retain spring. And hopefully I'll do a close up here and show you the orientation of that uh, retaining clip. But if you need to pause the video and, and, and look at what it looks like. All right, there's a clip spring uh, screw. And here's kind of an interesting like spacer cam thing. So your line clicker is gonna go on top of that spacer. That's gonna keep that uh, line clicker from rubbing on like the spool. And then we throw our screw in. So it's kind of like a spacer between the spool really the drag cover plate and the screw. So that spacer goes on the bottom, screw on top, and that's what your line clicker looks like. Boom. All right, so I throw the line clicker spring in. And the line clicker spring oriented so like the claw is facing, is like this towards the drag cover. And then you just get it to clip onto that little hole in the bottom, tighten everything down, and you're ready to rock and roll. So that little line clicker spring, it should be on the left, you have like the hook facing down, and then you're gonna have like the coil spring, and then um, a flat portion of the spring which gets uh, screwed down. All right, we're gonna throw some oil on the drag knob uh, seal, and the two drag washers that go on top. So we throw the carbon washer in, then we throw the metal one on top. Makes sense, we don't want to retain spring, rub it up against the uh, carbon fiber. It's better to have that metal on top, boom, just like that. Throw in a bunch of grease. That'll help your seal out and um, your spool is ready to go. I throw some grease on the uh, main shaft assembly and seal structure, and then just twist that spool around until all those drag washers seek alignment and get all perfectly aligned. And then now we can throw our drag knob back on, tighten that down, and we kind of want to test the functionality of the spool. And it, it twists around, looks good. We're gonna throw some oil on our um, handle assembly and in the main gear uh, shaft there make sure everything's nice and lubed up turn that uh, counterclockwise and then we have our handle cap and we tighten that home boom and we twist counterclockwise make sure the spool and uh, bail all function properly. I'm gonna readjust the different drag settings, make sure it gets really tight, and then we're gonna loosen it back up and everything works uh, as it should. Sweet. Tested the bail functionality, it closes up, it looks good. All right, real easy, I'm gonna show you how to take apart the uh, handle knob. Just get a really big fat screw, 
and uh, unscrew that plate. Just gonna throw some oil on that screw and bearing inside. Make sure it's tight. I'm gonna throw some grease on the uh, knob cover. Now you can take that knob off if you unscrew that screw and then you can put on um, the foam handle knob. But I don't know why you would. This metal handle knob is so much better. Kind of finicky to get the alignment. So I'll, I'll twist it left till it clicks and then turn it right. And that handle knob cover plate locks in, in place. So there your handle knob is fully serviced as well. And then there you have it, fully serviced and ready to go Pen Slammer 4 or Slammer 4 DX. I can't thank you enough for stopping by. Um, these repair videos, they take a lot of time um, and a lot of data, a lot of memory, or um, it's just a, a, a crap load of data, especially at 4K. Most importantly, I hope this video is helpful and make sure you get out there and go fishing. I'm gonna go get some sleep, bye.